What we wanted to do really with opening ceremony is how can we open the book? It's the cover page of the 182 pages that people will read through. The opening ceremony is what could set the stage for the next few months for World Expo. This is Amna Abul Hol, the Executive Creative Director of Expo 2020 Dubai's opening ceremony. What we did is really create a story of hope. And hope was represented as a metaphor of a young girl. And we added a character to this person. She was curious. She used to tap into everything. She goes around. She doesn't stop. She really wants to achieve more. This young girl, performed by Dubai-born 11-year-old Mira Singh, who captured the hearts of viewers globally, becomes the protagonist in this inaugural moment of Expo 2020 Dubai. Through this narrative that unfolds inside the beating heart of the site, Al Wasl Plaza, she guides us to a picture-perfect metaphor of what our world could be. <laughs> An elderly Emirati man enters, walking through the pathways that spiral into the platform in the center of Al Wasl. And then, for the first time, we see the young girl, who's supposed to be his granddaughter. He narrates poetically to her the vision of a bright future. As they meet, he hands her the Dubai golden ring of Saruq al Hadid and sends her on a quest of discovery. She really represents the curiosity uh, of Dubai. She represents the uh, uplifting of Dubai. She represents the never stopping of Dubai. And her questions about, uh, is it us or the world? It's the same. It's what Dubai did with opening, with the expo. The thing with opening ceremonies is that they go beyond theatrics. They evoke a certain sentiment in audiences, this wonderific sense of nostalgia for something that hasn't yet happened. Think of every ceremonial event you've watched. Think of the anticipation. And think of where you were sitting at the time the proverbial curtain was drawn. After three years of planning, a global pandemic, a 12-month delay, and a whole lot of perseverance, on the night of September 30th, 2021, people everywhere watched as the first World Expo in the region commemorated this historic milestone. And with that, Expo 2020 Dubai was officially declared open. The time has now come to open Expo 2020 Dubai. An expo that marks an era. An expo that plays a defining role in the global recovery. An expo that contributes to a better future. As this expo takes place in real time, we look back at the creative process that made this opening ceremony so magical. I'm Noon Saleh, and this is Inside Expo, an official podcast of Expo 2020 Dubai, where history is being made. It was challenging to really understand how can we minimize as much as possible the language and keep it more emotional. And yes, music is a universal language, but we noticed that emotions are the universal language. Like even if you really don't understand English or Arabic, that the spoken words that are happening, you really enter a journey in emotions. And we really wanted to relate to everyone. 
and everyone loves to be uh, listening to a story. A lot of the stories that we all know that we maybe learn and or listen to from our grandmas or grandfathers growing up are born from the Arab world. The stories, no matter what sort of culture or part of the world we're from, are the same. They're maybe told in slightly a slightly different way. So those stories born of the Arab world can resonate globally. This is Kate Randall. I'm the Vice President of Ceremonies and Programming in the Events and Entertainment Department at Expo. She and Amna have embarked on the opening ceremony journey together, practically from the very start. We're like um, kindred spirits. We talk about all the time the sort of connections between the UAE and Australia, which is where I was born, and how there are so many similarities in our two cultures alone and how that sort of manifested at Expo across the, you know, 192 countries that, that we have here. And the opening ceremony would be the first impression of sorts to communicate to the world how this city, this nation that just celebrated its 50th year, endeavoured to fuse all these cultures in one place. At the start of our opening ceremony for Expo in Dubai, it was really important for us to place Dubai and the UAE as the host. That really guided, I guess, a lot of our sort of music thoughts, a lot of the lighting treatments and um, a lot of the cast and the types of performances that we did in the first part of the show. It begins with the official welcome of dignitaries to the expo, the raising of the flag and a solo of the national anthem. And then Emirati icon Hussein al-Jasmi performs before His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al-Maktoum, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al-Nahyan, distinguished guests and delegates. Applause, music, and the first act of the girl's discovery story begins. A crowd floats in, and then a sea of flags, including those representing the 192 countries participating at Expo. How we brought the flag bearers, because Expo has so many nationalities, we asked the Expo tribe to be the one raising their homeland flag. Despite it very clearly being set in Dubai and the UAE, I think the show really spoke to the rest of the world. It's an international show, but whoever saw it from start to end will feel that it's related to them. When we put a show together as a a nationality or a, a person who is from a specific country, it's not necessary to put all the cultural elements that is a cliche to everyone. I purposely infused Emirati life within it without people noticing. Take the hero's backstory, for instance, which as part of the audience, you wouldn't really have any way of knowing. She was imagined to be the daughter of a main Dubai trader. And this bit of her biography was embedded in the most subtle of elements. Dubai was always a trade place. This young girl wearing a specific thobe that Dubai people wear. And the dresses of the girls long time ago, the material, the the cuts, etc., etc., is all brought from the different trades. And this is something where people might not notice, but it means a lot. Even the way the the grandfather who gave the expo ring, the way he's wearing the agal, even the... The belt he was wearing, we got it from a museum. A lot of small but meaningful details were embedded into the costumes, like the al-wasl pattern sewn into the white cape of headlining vocalist Mesa Kara, who sang the Expo theme song, This Is Our Time, alongside Hussein al-Jasmi and Elmas. There were also all these Easter eggs hidden throughout the show. For example, the girl's draping gold necklace was inscribed with the word Dubai on its back. But perhaps most fascinating of all were the Raf tree leaves. So the perfect garden had a tree. And initially it was more of these big grand trees. I said, let's have a gaff tree. We have the biggest amount of gaff trees around the site. How about let's pick a few leaves from every tree and let's scan it and let's laser cut it and have all of it. It should have an element of the UAE and not only the UAE, element from the site because it came from the roots of the Garden of Al-Wasl. 
The smaller, more intimate gestures are powerful in their own way. But to be sure, the truly unrivaled hero of this production is the projection dome at Al Wasl. Al Wasl Plaza is a unique place. It's a 360 uh, space, 130 meters. When the expo ring was lifted, how we awakened the dome, we added AR of Aurora. People thought it's real. By AR, she means augmented reality. And it really does play tricks on your mind when you're watching on a screen. Those Aurora Northern Lights were only the start of what would be a stunning audio-visual performance that complemented sketches, orchestral music, and choreographed dances. And this is where we played a lot with the music. We took specific music and songs, but we reorchestrated it again. We said, okay, let's raise the Nai a lot, because it's a very sad, emotional thing. Let's add more of uh, the cello. That takes you to another world. But then let's make people smile. And what really helped is the choreography. It really brings people together in ribbons. And this is where they carry the girl. No one knows how she got carried. She had a big seed, and this is where she planted it. And the next scene, we saw the perfect gaff tree coming from the basement. We really wanted to to demonstrate that hope is a seed that needs to be nurtured, um, taken care of by the world. And this is where we stood under the perfect garden at the end. Bringing together an opening ceremony is a huge collaborative exercise, for sure. That's Kate Randall, whom we heard from earlier. There's a creative team um, that work on uh, developing the show from a music perspective, the choreography and all the performance elements, um, the design of all of the set and scenic parts of the show, looking at costumes, looking at props. And a wild lineup of superstars from the region and beyond, including Ahlam, Mohamed Abdul, four time Grammy winner Angelique Kidjo, and pop icon Ellie Golding. There was also renowned pianist Lang Lang, the mesmerizing Andre Day, and the one and only Andrea Bocelli. And throughout the event, there were about a thousand performers in the extended cast. During the rehearsal process, there were there were two key moments that I think really got everybody going, and, and the same for me, watching all of the flags of the 192 um, nations that were going to be participating in Expo just suddenly made it all so real. And then we had Andra Day. Andra Day, the dazzling American singer belting out, I'll rise up, rise like the day. I'll rise up in spite of the ache. I will rise a thousand times again and we'll rise up. Trust me, at three o'clock in the morning when we were rehearsing on site and there was nobody else around and you were walking up one of the avenues and could just hear that song booming out of our wassail, the lyrics just had so much meaning in terms of the hard work that everyone had put into getting this expo to happen and then um, it about to become a reality that next day. By the time it gets to the day of the ceremony, there's this really crazy sense of calm and quiet. It was sort of just waiting for it to happen, actually, until about four hours out from the show. And then it started to get pretty scary. I think that's when it sort of hit that, oh my goodness, we're about to do this. And it's now or never. We get one chance to do this live to broadcast around the world. And then it's done. Not to mention, putting on a live show and broadcasting it at the same time meant creating two separate experiences, especially in a space like Al Wasl, where a 360-degree visual display was integral to the story. 
then it's really the part where we really get to show off what our Wassel Plaza is capable of, what Dubai is capable of and what Expo is going to deliver and when we got to really use every trick that we had available to us in our Wassel. And it's not as big as a stadium, so you really cannot hide stuff. If you have a big scenic prop, you cannot hide it. Everyone sees everything. If you want to hide an item, you need to dance around it. But you as a visitor, as an audience, you choose what you want to see from this palette of uh, emotions and dances. And so cleverly, it was decided that the girl, the central character played by Mira Singh, would be the only character to wear a brightly colored fuchsia dress. This way, whenever she walked on set, the audience's attention would follow her and away from a prop change, for example. The constantly changing scenes had to appear seamless for the audience at Al Wasl. That's one of the really critical things that does make uh, a show such as an opening ceremony so successful is how it flows and all links together and how we move from, from one scene and or segment uh, to the other. The person who is sitting in the space feels the floor rumbling feels everything around. It's just an immersive experience. Really immersive in every sense of the word. When you enter any of the arches of El Wasl, you feel you entered into a grandmother's house. When you walk from the gate to the grandmother's door, what do you smell? We actually created a specific scent that had gardenia, it had mashmoom, it had jasmine. We created a perfume about that smell and we infused it within the seats in the opening ceremony. For viewers at home, the camera angles dictated where to look, mostly by tracking the cast or act that was central in a given scene. We directed it differently. We followed the journey of the girl through her eye, through her lens. If you notice, even from a camera perspective, we went low. We wanted the audience to be the girl. What really elevated the experience for home viewers were the augmented reality features Amna mentioned earlier. In one scene, it looked as though the cosmos were raining down stars. Like for real. And you have this sort of magical picture in your mind of of how amazing it was going to be, I think, to then actually watch it. It's a little bit scary. I think it's a real mix of emotions at the end of a show like this. For this one, there was huge relief that it had happened and it had been successful. Post the pandemic, the story is more relevant than ever, bringing the world together. When we come together and connect, the world for everyone becomes like a heaven. And this was the perfect garden. And we really wanted to create this symbolic meaning with every single act. In the crowd itself, there were a lot of mixed emotions. There was laughter, there was awe, there were most definitely tears, um, and there was a lot of excitement. Everyone had the same passion to achieve the best opening ceremony the world needed, not as how grand it is, from a story perspective, what the world needed. I think that word ceremony for people sort of holds this value and or hopefulness of the world actually becoming one. When we sit as a bunch of creative team, the staging director, the costume designer, we see a bit of the future. We see from a sketch how it will look like. And when we see it, in reality, it's like a deja vu. But it's hard to explain it. I felt that moment that the world is fine. As they say, Inside Expo takes you behind the scenes at Expo 2020 Dubai, sharing our stories and others across the 170-year history of this global event. Learn more by visiting virtualexpodubai.com. Inside Expo is produced by Kerning Cultures Network. We release episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you enjoyed listening to this episode, share it with your friends and leave us a review.